good afternoon one and all present over here respected dignitaries faculty members and all my dear participants and expert dr ashish kothari joined with us to take today's webinar on behalf of gtu graduate school of engineering and technology i dr komal bori sagar coordinator of the webinar welcome you in all the first webinar which will be on video signal watermarking giving credit to original creator of a video by protecting the unauthorized use its application of digital signal processing topics covered in this webinar are introduction frequency and spatial domain watermarking different transform watermarking using linear algebra attacks during the watermarking and experimental and so this webinar is organized by gtu gset in association with vodafone foundation india graduate school of engineering and technology has been started in year of 2017 it is ai cti approved institute established and managed by gtu recently two pg programs me in cyber security and me in mobile communication and network technology are run by the institute we are also going to start one year pg diploma course in data science from year 2020 21 the vision of the institute is to provide excellent technical knowledge and preparing competent manpower in the respective specialization with this aim we organized this webinar series i found immense pleasure by introducing our today's session expert dr ashish kothari dr ashish kothari has achieved expertise in digital video watermarking matlab sign lab and python programming he has done extensive research in the field of digital image processing he is a senior faculty and head of department and associate professor in electronics and communication branch at athmia university presently he is deputy registrar of athmia university he has been a key person for developing of ecosystem in innovation and research in athmia university also he has applied his key input in implementing odisha club ssip club ostc and filled 11 patents with the student and its own name dr kothari has more than 30 research articles published in scopus web of science index journals three ieee conference articles 10 conference articles at international and national level along with 11 patent files and 9 books out of which four are published in springer international he has also contributed to write a, a chapter in reputed publication like igi and crc so not wasting much time here all of us are here to get a maximum a uh, knowledge advance advantage from dr kothari so i welcome you dr kothari so now over to you sir so we can start this thank session. you ma'am okay thank you ma'am okay. uh, thank you for the introduction and uh, i also thank uh, uh, gujarat technological university uh, as well as uh, uh komal madam for inviting me for delivering my talk so uh, i hope uh, my screen is visible to all of you uh, madam uh, is, is it yes. visible yes it okay. is visible okay 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 
so uh, as uh, madam said uh, we'll be uh, talking uh, today about video signal water marking which is one of the application of uh, uh, digital signal processing uh, basically uh, let let us take an example let us just take an example of that uh, for example some uh, uh, channel some some channel is uh, giving one video series with the logo of it for example here uh, we have taken a logo of atmi university over here and similar is the kind of the logo that is used by every channel for broadcasting the uh, video series right suppose i replace this uh, logo of for example star plus with atmi university then how can star plus say that this is our video this is not the video of atmi university what i do is i i replace the with uh, the, the logo of star plus with at the university and i start broadcasting it in the local region then how can uh, how can original creator of the video that is star plus can protect the unauthorized used by me or someone else so basically today we will be talking about how they can prove that this video belongs to us and uh, this is our own own original creation this is not the creation by some other some other um, usages so basically today i will be talking or rather rather not talking but rather discussing about uh, the video signal water marking uh, giving the credit to the original creator of the video as uh, being introduced by uh, komal madam and basically the broad area of this is signal processing so sir, a video is sir, yes ma'am sir yes. sir if possible please maximize your screen okay, so okay. the participants are able to see clearly okay uh, is okay, it clear now, okay, okay. now it's fine sir okay, okay. thank you thank you ma'am so i will be discussing on uh, this particular aspect of uh, uh, signal processing it is it is a broader area uh, we are we are going narrower to uh, video signal and again uh, one of its uh, application that is video signal water marking uh, this is basically the outline of uh, uh, the presentation what i'll be doing throughout my uh, entire talk uh, as madam suggested i'll be starting with introduction to what video water marking is what water marking is and then going ahead with uh, the application of the video marking video water marking in various domains followed by uh, one concept that is taking the advantage of uh, various methodologies and uh, taking maximum uh, output so far as the uh, water marking is concerned and then uh, we can talk about this uh, conclusion also so so far as uh, basically introduction is concerned we will be talking about this many topics what is water marking uh, the classification uh, followed by what are the Uh, evaluation matrices with the help of which we can uh, find which particular algorithm is good in in which particular uh, environment right and what is the general idea of water marking so basically uh, water marking is nothing but a technique of embedding embedding means placing a secret message that secret message is called a water mark into the original message that is called our medium so here we will be talking about uh, video water marking basically it is it, it, it came out from uh, it came out from image water marking and image water marking it also came out from uh, steganography after uh, after cryptography so initially we all know what cryptography is cryptography when there are problems found in cryptography steganography was introduced which is point to point communication then based on the requirements followed by uh, steganography point to multi point communication the image water marking is introduced followed by video water marking for the protection as well as proof giving concepts of uh, uh, a video right so here uh in, in in major cases the cover medium will be talking about is uh, video basically it is a signal right and water mark may be uh, anything uh, uh, it, it can be text it can be image it can be uh, a small video also or it can be anything right so basically this is a technique of putting uh, secretly putting secretly a message behind the every frame of the video in such a manner that the third party will not be able to understand 
will not be able to see those kind of messages and at the time of at the time when that particular video is uh, uh, is to be proven that this is our video we can uh, apply the reverse algorithm and can prove that this is our video this is this is not the video which is reproduced by someone else so here it is written if you can see the second line only the knowledge of the decoding algorithm and the secret keys allows you to extract the watermark so so as to give the proof that this video is mine i'll i'll apply the decoding algorithm and i'll say that this particular thing would be extracted when i would decode the algorithm this particular thing will be extracted when i decode the third frame of the video uh, video fourth frame of the video and subsequent frames of the video and when i apply the algorithm because i i embedded it i can be able to recover it i can prove that this is my video and not the others so this is what is the entirely uh, basically uh, idea of what water marking is and it is used for point to multi point applications and many applications nowadays uh, are using video water marking uh specifically uh, if if i take one example uh, medical uh, videos sonography uh, see uh, that uh, mri report and all when 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 there is a continuous motion picture in, in each of the frames of that sonography or mri the doctor places its own watermark inside or or various uh, other information inside the frames of the of that particular video and that is being transmitted through internet to a different place so that uh, the decoding algorithm if applied at that end you can extract the information out of it so there are many 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 uh, applications uh, with which this watermarking can work um, after we conclude this session we can discuss about various applications also so uh, this is what watermarking is it is basically a technique of embedding and extracting the watermark from the cover medium which is video so this is the basic idea what i was discussing with you uh, basically cover medium can be uh, video in our case message can be image audio or text anything and uh, we have finally watermark medium which can be transmitted to anywhere uh, uh, in in any domain right and uh, then in any channel like uh, in any channel it can be transmitted there it find some attacks also that we will also discuss and uh, then it is uh, it, re it reaches to the receiver end and again that message is to be extracted so here video uh, there, there are two things one is the proof of the video can be given by putting some messages inside the video and take a, taking the messages at the receiving end uh, back this is one case and second case is using this video as a, a as a carrier for example in communication in communication we use carrier signal so as to take some messages so if messages are important so this video can work as a carrier and and at the receiver end this messages can be extracted and uh, other things can go out the 2611 is 2611 uh, attack Uh, on on that twin tower is the best example of or or maybe the first uh, ever example of uh, video watermarking technique we can say uh, this is basically classification of various uh, watermarking technique watermarking can be classified according to uh, the working domain type of document human perception and application so far as working domain will be we will be focusing on both the domains spatial as well as transform domain uh will be uh, taking the document type of the document will be using video in this case invisible watermarking is we will we, we'll take both the examples of invisible and visible uh, uh, watermarking and uh, destination based watermarking is the application which uh, will be discussing throughout the work talk right so uh, and requirement is basically when we when we apply watermarking or when we embed watermark into the video Uh, uh i i i hope uh, i am not too fast and if i am i i am uh, somehow variable kindly uh, break me in between and uh, tell me to uh, stop or if any question in between you can uh, ask uh, i'll 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 try to answer the uh, questions uh, answer the query right so basically what are the requirement of a good watermarking technique so there are three basically 
one is robustness another one is imperceptibility and third one is payload capacity uh, when i when i say robustness what does it mean it means that it preserves the content of the water mark under various settings what does it mean it means that i have placed one message behind frames of the video right that that video now is watermarked video and it goes to a particular channel that channel may have some problems some problems meet some noises some uh, compression technique or that channel may be accessed by a third party that what does that third party do is it can it can attack on that particular video it can change the contents of the video he he will not he or she will not be third party uh, person uh, will not be able to identify that there are messages inside uh, that particular video because he or she does not have any recording algorithm but they know that this some video is transmitted and i can corrupt this video and uh, um, uh, then the the receiver side the message which is embedded cannot be received but if my if my algorithm is such that if my algorithm is such that even though there are many attacks on a particular video within the channel within the channel between transmitter and receiver side if there are uh, if 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 there are many uh, attacks then then also the receiver end can can uh, receive the information so this is what is the uh, this is what is called as robustness robustness means you are able to preserve your watermark message at the receiver end even if there are attacks being made uh, between transmitter and receiver channel second one is imperceptibility so far as definition is concerned it is perceptual transparency of the watermark image what does it mean it means that whenever you whenever you put something into the video it it means that you are altering the information of the original video whenever you are altering the information of the original video the the quality of the original video or original image uh, gets corrupted or gets reduced fine so it 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 should not be so much of corrupted that any any person will be able to identify that yes there is some watermark being placed inside that particular video so even so the algorithm must be such that it it preserves the perceptual transparency perceptual transparency means it the image or video should be should look almost almost uh, uh, same as the original video even uh, even after the message is placed behind or a message is embedded uh, behind that particular image or video and third one is the payload capacity payload capacity is, is that the amount of the information as a watermark the amount of the information that you can embed inside Uh, the video inside a frame of a video or inside uh, various frames of the video it depends on uh, the spatial size the size of the video in uh, in, in, in spatial uh, resolution right so these are the three most important requirement of any water marking uh, technique one is robustness most important imperceptibility and payload capacity so a triangle is shown in uh, uh, in the downside of our powerpoint presentation it shows that uh, basically these three cannot be achieved at the same same time these three entirely these three cannot be achieved at the same time so we need to have a trade off between these three so i can achieve robustness and imperceptibility with the uh, with the with the trade off in payload capacity or i can increase the payload capacity with keeping the robustness as it is so my perceptibility gets reduce the my my uh, quality get uh, reduced so this is how uh, a trade off between uh, these three parameters can be taken into consideration or must be taken into consideration depending on depending on what is uh, what what basically application is so depending on the application area uh, we should decide what parameter is to be taken care of more than the others right so these are the requirements Uh, basically uh, basically all the videos nowadays all the videos that we transmit are uh, most of rgb rgb why because it it, it looks good to us it, it looks uh, perceptually it is good for 
our eyes and that's why we are using rgb we are recording rgb we are transmitting rgb and, uh, and and basically we are processing rgb but the problem with that rgb image is that uh, if we if we if we uh, if we take the rgb image or rgb video and put the watermark inside rg or b plane then the entire information gets uh, affected very highly because our eyes our eyes are are are, are very much sensitive to the change in these three colors why because these three colors are called primary colors and if there is any change in the primary color our eye our our iris system or what we can say our human visual system hvs is very much sensitive towards the uh, color right so what we do is uh, we need to convert that particular rgb image into a form into a form where we can we can basically use the information and not the color so uh, there are many such color space you can you go for hsv you can go for ycbcr so here i i here in most of the uh, papers if you find or in most of the researches uh, that is done on the image and video uh, you find you find that most of the color space conversion are from rgb to ycbcr why because why basically it is a luminous component it is very important why because the maximum amount of the information inside the image is placed in the y uh, component that is luminance component uh, that why y component is similar to uh, the grayscale uh, photograph or grayscale video that we see the entire information without color the entire information is there in the y component and uh, cb and cr are less informative we don't means means we can say that uh, we, we don't uh, would would change the values of cb and cr which are very less informative and less important to us so what we focus on we will focus on y component and uh, for the watermarking purpose and, and it, it is truly written that basically our hsv system is more sensitive towards the brightness as compared to the color and that's why we'll be using y component so before before starting uh, putting the uh, putting any information behind rgb video we convert it into ycbcr on the receiver end also we will convert back from ycbcr to um, rgb image so this is important why because we need y component we need luminance uh, luminance component we need intensity component which basically is proven to be very important important as well as informative and hence we will be using that particular y component for the purpose of the water marking uh, this are the how how we can identify that this particular uh, algorithm is good and this particular algorithm is is is, is better or best for, so far as any image processing algorithm is concerned so with the reference taken from uh, this particular paper which is cited uh, in the lower part of this particular ppt uh two most important parameters are uh, used as a performance evaluation parameter in uh, uh, in 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 most of the image uh, uh, signal processing application uh, that are msc and uh, psnr uh, basically msc is mean square error and uh, as you can see the expression itself uh, tells that f of x comma y is the original image or frame of the video and f dash of x comma y is basically the altered frame of the uh, altered uh, frame of that particular video and uh, we are finding the square uh, part of that so basically it is called means square error error means the difference between these two uh, original and modified right and the psnr again depends on uh, the value of msc psnr is uh, said as uh, peak signal to noise ratio so uh, basically these two performance parameters are used at the transmitter end so as to check uh, the deviation of the watermarked frame as compared to the original frame and uh, uh, papers say that many research paper as well as experiment say that so far as the color uh, frame is concerned if uh, you go about 24 db psnr peak signal to noise ratio if you go about 24 25 db then it looks like uh, it looks similar to what uh, the original image is then anything less than that uh, uh, clearly 
our eyes can our naked eyes can clearly visualize the uh, problem or the degradation in the image so so you need to write down an algorithm of putting the message behind the frame of the video in such a manner that your value of psnr is better than 24 25 db so that uh, so far as perceptibility is concerned we can uh, Uh, we we can have a good uh, result of that so as it is written it is these two parameters are to be used at the transmitter end and uh, uh, are used to measure the imperceptibility part of what we have discussed uh, at the transmitter end right uh, so far as uh, the receiver side is concerned we will be using correlation right uh, there is a concept of correlation in the signal processing it gives the amount of similarity between two signals correlation gives the amount of the similarity between two signals here as a signal we are using either image or frame of the video then whenever you find correlation you find correlation more between these two uh, original as well as uh, uh, this video uh, original as well as uh, corrupt uh, degraded video then uh, we can say that the recovered watermark It, it, this is used as receiver end, and uh, it it correlates the original watermark and the recovered watermark, and based on that, we can measure the robustness purpose. So even after there are there are many attacks within the channel at the receiver end, if the correlation between the recovered uh, watermark and original uh, watermark is nearer to one, is more than eighty five percent, eight point eighty five or so. then we can say that uh, basically uh, this is a good uh, robust algorithm that is being designed so uh, there are three performance parameter that we will be using throughout uh, uh, this discussion one is psnr uh, uh, peak signal to noise ratio which is based on msc mean square error uh, both are used as the transmitter end so as to find out the uh, quality of the you know, watermark the message watermark the image or video and at the receiver end we will be measuring correlation between the original and recovered watermark so as to measure the robustness which are our requirement right uh, many attacks that can be considered uh, that can apply inside uh, the channel between transmitter and receiver end uh, uh, that are low pass average filter gaussian low pass filter low pass median filtering and uh, high pass filtering these all are called filtering attacks so any any attack can happen uh, within the channel uh, it, it is not compulsory that there must be a, a third party person uh, who will be monitoring the channel and uh, uh, producing this kind of attacks but but it may be due to the it may be due to the property of the channel itself that by default applies these these kind of uh, attacks to uh, attach to the video for example we are using we, we we all are using whatsapp right when for example i have a video i have a video of uh, a, a size of uh, for example 10 mb right and when i put that put that video 10 mb video into our whatsapp and i i, I transfer it to you so basically the channel of the whatsapp is such that it automatically compresses It, it automatically gives the compression attack. Uh, it compresses your video, and whenever when you receive that video, it it is uh, more than ninety percentage. You find more than ninety percentage compression based on the quality of the video itself. So you you get one MB of video, even though you will find that the quality is good, right? So 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 basically, this kind of attack are the properties of the channel also. that these kind of attacks are applied on, uh, on 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 the video right so filtering attacks followed by uh, the noise attacks that can be gaussian salt and keeper and uh, speckle noise any 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 noise can uh, have its own attack uh, and uh, similarly what we are discussing we are discussing about is compression attack color reduction histogram equalization uh motion of the camera that can be one attack at the time of capturing the attack rotation or cropping attack this two attack can be man made most of these attacks are man made or channel channel uh, uh, property attacks right so in this way many of the attacks can attack the video 
but our our algorithm should be written in such a manner that even though these kind of attack attacks the our video then then also you will be able to receive the messages at the receiver end and it too uh, in a good quality right so the requirement from our side is to write down an algorithm to take care about what we discussed robustness imperceptibility payload capacity is not important but also it is uh, it can be taken care of right so basically you see this is a general uh, idea of uh, what we have discussed that we have a video file it can be uh, it can be uh, divided into number of frames uh, using any of the algorithm there may be n frame inside a single video file uh, we will take frame by frame we will apply our algorithm frame by frame uh, frame is in rgb then we can convert it into ycb and cr and on the sorry on the right side of this particular image you can see that this frame one when applied y cb and cr you can see that cb and cr does not have any information but y component is carrying the information which is which is somehow important to us we can we can find the idea we can have the idea of uh, how the information looks like in this particular video right it is it is a grayscale component y component is a grayscale component and it is Uh, having maximum information as we have discussed so these particular all these three will go to embedding algorithm there may be any embedding algorithm and uh, the watermark y component uh, will get y component which is watermark and this particular watermark the message is placed behind uh, behind this y component and we got this watermark the y component then again that y c b and c r component are converted back into rgb uh, this is done in all the frames and all the frames then combined so as to have the watermark video so here we'll have the original video here we have we'll have the watermark video you need to you need to take care while writing the algorithm that the difference between these two uh, difference of the quality between these two uh, video files original and watermark video files are or or remains same right remains same means uh, remains a uh, difference remains as low as possible means the value of psnr is as high as possible the value of msc is as low as possible so this is the general idea of what how we can embed how we can use the embedding algorithm uh, this is the general idea of the extraction algorithm so, uh, exactly reverse to what we have done in uh, embedding algorithm we have the watermark video with us they are converted into frames we take the frames convert it into ycbcr apply the extraction algorithm and we'll get back the extracted message uh, at the output of this particular algorithm so here here we'll be uh, applying correlation algorithm between these these extracted uh, message and uh, these message that we transmitted or embedded at the transmitter end when the correlation is as as the correlation of between these two messages is higher we can say that our robustness of our algorithm is better right so uh, this is the extraction algorithm so uh, so uh, in in the introduction we have seen that we can apply any embedding algorithm at the transmitting end any extraction algorithm at the receiver end but we need we 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 can use any method for embedding and extraction method but at the same time we need to take care of imperceptibility uh, concept at the transmitter end and the concept of the robustness at the receiver end uh, keeping these two into mind we uh, we would write down the algorithm so uh, the first uh, uh, watermarking algorithm that can be written written is in the spatial domain a uh, spatial domain is uh, we, we can say that uh, uh, basically spatial domain is what we can see with our eyes whatever we can see with our eyes and whatever we capture with our eyes basically and what we see with our eyes are called spatial domain uh, 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 image right so uh, that image processing basically this this spatial domain video order marking is spatial domain image processing spatial domain video processing Uh, if we if we say in short to this processing we can say that basically it is a, 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 a c modify and a c algorithm you see 
that this is the image you modify the value of the pixel itself of the particular image without transforming to any other domain you directly modify the value of the pixel and you see the you observe or you see the altered image or video right this is what is the concept of spatial domain processing right so you see you modify and you see this is what you do in the spatial domain right and basically spatial domain image processing or video processing is used to enhance the quality of the image in one case and in another case what we'll be discussing uh, is uh, video watermarking right so in this we'll be uh, discussing on visible watermarking as well as invisible watermarking visible watermarking is very uh, simple that uh, what we discussed is we have a video and we want to put our watermarks onto the video we can uh, place it and this is the concept uh, we'll take the same size so suppose the frame size is of uh, uh, 300 cross uh, 300 for example uh, 300 cross 300 then we will design uh, a 300 cross 300 uh, image in such a, in, in in this particular manner you see uh, there are two parts of the image one is transparent part uh, covering the white color and another one is called non transparent part which is covering the black color if you say riya and uh, mithal these two word are the non transparent part of uh, uh, this particular watermark and entirely the other part of the image where you find out white color right are transparent part so uh, in in short white color represent the transparent part and black color represent the non transparent part we want this non transparent part to be placed in uh, on on our uh, on every frame of the video so again the concept is same as we have discussed in the uh, third or fourth back, uh, slide deck um, that uh, for the embedding you need to convert into frames so we'll convert it to frames and uh, what we'll do is uh, we'll apply this algorithm whenever you find a black pixel uh, in the watermark then you will replace that particular part of your original frame with a black pixel that black pixel is uh, all uh, 8 bits of that pixel are zero black pixel means the decimal value equal to zero white pixel means decimal value equal to 255 here I, uh, i i want to clarify that whatever we are discussing uh, what whatever we are discussing we are discussing of 8 bit image and 8 bit video which is used in general right there may be uh, um, less or more bits of uh, video or uh, images but in most uh, of the cases when we use our smartphone or digi cam or anything right we uh, are using the concept of 8 bits per pixel uh, for a particular image or video so uh, this is my clarification so uh, when there is a black pixel when you find a black pixel in your uh, algorithm right uh, that particular po portion of the original frame is to be replaced with the black pixel whatever is its value whatever whatever its is value you you replace it with black pixel and whenever you find a white pixel in uh, the water bar message you don't do anything with the pixel so uh, the concept is very simple if you uh, if you uh, if you uh, what if you suppose that what kind of code is written so the code is very easy it it it, uh, it is basically a two four loops uh, row and column wise four loops uh, to take the value of the message uh, check it whether it is black or white pixel if it is black pixel you convert the same part of the video frame with a black pixel otherwise don't do anything so that's how we can put our visible watermark inside a particular video you can see on uh, on, on on this particular part on the upper uh, left uh, sorry upper right and uh, lower right uh, the watermark is being embedded visible watermark is being embedded inside the video right so basically invisible watermarking so this is what is the result so basically invisible uh, watermarking is used uh, is done using the lsb approach lsb is least significant bit approach right if you go from uh, we we discussed about that every pixel of the image is of 8 bit every pixel of the frame is of 8 bits then if we take a particular pixel for example 
if if you take a particular pixel it is of 8 bits right it is of 8 bits now let us consider let us consider the, the a, a white pixel white pixel means all bits uh, having the value equal to 1 if you consider it consider the decimal value it is 255 right now let us let us consider two cases case number 1 Case number one. Uh, let us replace uh, LSB of that particular uh, pixel. LSB means bit zero, right? LSB of that particular pixel with zero. So when you replace LSB of that particular uh, pixel with zero, it will be uh, seven ones followed by a zero. And if you convert it into decimal value, it is two fifty four. So what is the difference between these two? Uh, original original pixel was two fifty five. Whenever you altered, when you altered. Uh, the least significant bit, uh, the the difference is only one, two fifty five to two fifty four. Now let us consider case number two. In case number two, uh, um, let us replace uh, MSB, that is most significant bit, that is bit seven of uh, that particular pixel with zero. So all ones and uh, the MSB is replaced with zero, means zero followed by seven ones. And if you convert it into uh, decimal value you will find it 127 so what is the difference 255 minus 127 so it is a huge difference of 128 as compared to a very small difference uh, of 1 when we altered the lsb value what does this mean this clearly suggest this clearly suggest this mathematics clearly suggest that the most important information in a pixel is present from the msb to lsb if we go from msb to lsb the information start digressing and this is the proof of the same you see a particular image is being transformed to various planes this is msb plane so what what is done over here is we take two only msbs all other bits are made zero here we take two only seventh bit all other bits are zero and similarly we go to lsb part you can clearly identify that from from msb to lsb when you take a journey when you take a journey from msb to lsb you will find that the information the important information has started degrading and almost from the third plane or fourth plane third plane rather third plane you would find that there is no information no important information is placed uh, in this particular part so hence hence if we if we use these three plane or or if we start using this lsb plane for embedding a message even even if uh, we embed the message that total degradation in the image will not be so much why because the information over here in the lsb plane or second plane or third plane is very much low as compared to the msb so hence it is called the lsb approach to please some message inside that so what we can do is you see we are embedding 101 like this so what we are doing is we are we are replacing this lsb if you can see bold part right this is particular the part of the image that we want to place our our embedding watermark and this is how it is changed initially it was 185 then then it is initially you see 185 uh, one and one is replaced now 179 this one is to be replaced with the zero even if we replace it with zero only a difference of one so no significant difference you will be able to find over here even after we have embedded a secret message in the lsbs of this particular image so uh, uh, what what we have done is we have taken five different messages one is this ria 8110 Uh, this is of different size and this four are of different size so we have took uh, five different messages for the first five frames of the video so as to check whether our uh, what is the performance of our algorithm in uh, this particular aspect so uh, we have done this right so in lsb part we have placed the message we have placed in the the msb lsb part and significantly you will see there is no difference in the uh, watermark Friends, after putting or after uh, taking it back to the uh, sorry, back to the frame. So watermark the frame does not have a much difference between a uh, much difference after, even after placing the 
various messages. In 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 the first frame, we have placed that via message one, two, three, and four. Like this, we have placed the message. So this is this is done at the transmitter end. So at at that time, so this is what is the recovery at the receiver end, right? Absolutely, it is it is uh, a good quality recovery uh, at the receiver end. Uh, this is being considered when there is no uh, uh, attacks, when there is no attack uh, between the images, between the transmitter and the receiver. Sorry, so between the transmitter and the receiver, there are there is there are no attacks, and hence this is considered. So, if if you see the performance evaluation parameter, uh, all the three PSNR is more than uh, 55, 56, so it is almost uh, equal to the original image. Hence, the so far as perceptibility is concerned, it is good. Uh, MSC is obviously low because PSNR is high, and correlation is almost one. Means whatever we get at the receiver end is exactly equal to whatever what we have embedded at the transmitter end. But LSB approach is not uh, found good. Why? Because it is robust against the dropping attack, but it is not robust against any other attack. So LSB approach is not used. Uh, is not used anywhere. Why? Because of this reason that it is only robust against the dropping attack. If you drop um, uh, the entire frame to a certain extent, uh, even if you can uh, take your message back, but uh, otherwise. If any other attack is applied, you cannot extract the message. Why? Because LSB is disturbed, right? So LSB approach is not good. Then uh, second approach in spatial domain, uh, uh, spatial domain approach. Uh, again, 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 uh, uh, like to would like to tell you that spatial domain means you see, you modify, and you see. Means means uh, you modify in the spatial domain itself. Means you modify the value of the pixel itself. You modify the intensity value of the pixel itself depending on your algorithm, depending on your particular algorithm. And this is what we have done in the LSP part. Now, since since uh, it was not robust against any other uh, uh, attacks, uh, we are using correlation approach in the spatial domain. So what what is the idea? Idea is you. You design a random sequence. Random sequence means you you can have any sequence which is known only to you and the receiver end, right? This is the random sequence. You can decide by your own, right? You can decide decide this value of k. That k is called gain factor. Uh, why gain factor? We'll be discussing in the later part. Uh, we'll give the original uh, original image. This is the expression of the watermarked uh, image or video frame. That is uh, watermark intensity at a particular value of x and y is equal to original plus gain multiplied by uh, this particular sequence. Uh, the pseudo random sequence means any random sequence that you can uh, have. Right now, why k is called gain factor? Because let us consider two cases. Let us consider two cases. Let us consider k to be equal to zero. K to be equal to zero, then straightforwardly watermark image entirely is equal to the original image, and there is no no portion of this particular uh, pseudo random sequence added to the original uh, image, and hence original image is not dis uh, not uh, uh, dis uh, means uh, not disturbed, and uh, and it remains as it is means there is no watermark embedded inside the uh, video. In the frame. Now, as soon as the value of this particular k increases, based on this mathematical model, you can predict that as soon as the, this value of k increases, the degradation in this particular image or or addition or or or, or changes in this particular image increases. Hence, whenever value of k is when as soon as the value of k increases, the watermarked image or frame is is more degraded as compared to the as compared to the original image but this k is gain factor why because this k is the weighting uh, factor it, it is a weight given to the this random sequence and hence since this is the weight to the random sequence which later on which later on is used to embed one or zero inside your image inside your image then it will be Hence, it is called the gain 
rather than the degradation factor so it is gain factor so far as this water mark is concerned and it is degradation factor so far as the original image is concerned right so two such processes one for water mark so wxy that is uh, pseudo random pattern one pattern is uh, for water mark bit 0 and uh, the other pattern is for water mark bit 1 what does it mean it means that your water mark is uh, carrying two colors only one is black color and one is white color means one uh, uh, either it is having uh, uh, zero value or it is having the value equal to one so you have two random sequences one dedicated to uh, bit 0 and one dedicated to bit oh sorry 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 one dedicated to bit 1 Right, right. So, uh, if you if if the value of k is equal to 100, you see uh, the degradation is uh, um, can be can be seen from the naked eye. But uh, we have taken this result so as to see how this gain factor k is 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 useful to take extract our message at the receiver end. So, at the extraction message at, at the extraction process, what you do is you use the same PN sequence. You you use the same pseudo random sequence, and you find out the correlation between the uh, uh, both the sequence with the concept concept of the frame. Whenever you find the correlation of sequence zero, PN sequence zero, more than PN sequence one, you put a bit equal to one, uh, sorry zero. And whenever you find the correlation with uh, PN sequence one more, then you Uh, you place a message equal to one. So this is how you can recover the message. You see, whenever gain factor is more, the recovery, uh, the the correlation between the recovered message and uh, the transmitted message or original watermark message is good. Whenever this gain factor is less, the recovery is less, right? So you can see that uh, here we have used various values. Alpha is equal to 10, 20, 50, 70, 90, like this, right? So whenever we have used this uh, alpha value equal to 10, uh, uh, the gain factor that we got is 39 dB. So it is good, and quality is also good. Whenever value of gain factor is increased, degrade degradation de uh, increases, and you find out exactly uh, you can you can uh, effectively see that degradation from 39 dB to 29 dB from Alpha value tend to 90, but at the same time, when you this this is this is at the transmitter end, the upper results are at the transmitter end. But whenever you start recovering at the receiver end, you see the value of the correlation, 0.35 for alpha equal to 10. Why? Because the gain applied to the PN sequence was less. In in case of alpha equal to 90, the gain applied at the PN sequence was 90. Means it is more than ten. So the the uh, result, the correlation is point nine between the original and uh, recovered watermark. Yes, but at the cost of the degradation of the image. So uh, this is this is what is the concept. You give the give the weight to uh, watermark the image, watermark the and 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 take take it back if the weight is more. so it is again a trend of factor as we have discussed in the last uh, slide and these are the results various results you can see uh, you can observe various values of alpha psnr with various values of alpha as alpha increases uh, obviously uh, uh, this psnr would decrease but at the same end at the at the at the, at the same time at the receiver end the correlation between the two messages increases so you can use any uh, value of alpha depending on uh, your application depending on how important is uh, your message is what is the quality of the message that you required at the transmitter end and what is the quality of uh, the image watermark image that you require at the uh, transmitter end right so again there is a trade off but you can decide any value of alpha any value of gain factor uh, any uh, we can say any value of weight factor and go can go ahead so this is what is the reason so far as correlation approach is concerned uh, we can uh, we as we have discussed perceptibility decreases and robustness increases with the increase in the gain factor uh, uh, 
TSNR is greater than 28 dB, the message looks visibly fine. And uh, at the same time, the recovered message, uh, the correlation of the recovered message is same 0.5 to 50%, right? So 28 dB and 50%, central value we can take. Uh, but the problem is it is not robust against uh, filtering attacks. Most of the filtering attacks, average filtering and median filtering, as well as rotation uh, attack, right? It is partially robust against Gaussian low pass filtering, uh, compression, linear motion of the camera, Gaussian noise, uh, all the noises, right? And basically, if you see, it is fully robust against color reduction and cropping attacks. What does it mean? It means that even if you crop uh, your watermark uh, video to a very high extent, you will be able to find your watermark back from um, the cropped um, cropped video and similarly if you if you reduce the amount of the color very highly even means means here uh, there is no uh, effect of the color reduction in, uh, uh, in or very less effect of the color reduction in recovery of the where watermark is concerned right so these are the observations with correlation based approach so it is better than USB right but again uh, still still it is not good so far as uh, various attacks are concerned so uh, what we decided, or what 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 is um, uh, what is suggested, is you don't go for C modify and C concept. It is a very old concept. C modify and C concept. It is a very old concept. And for the signal processing, C modify and C is not a good thing to do. Why? Because they are um, uh, they are basically um, uh, in the in the form of what we can see. But, is, but but there is very good information uh, placed within that particular image itself and hence uh, we are going for transform domain uh, video watermarking. Here I would like to take a, uh, take a, take, take a very small uh, break and I would like to ask you whether any one of you have any question and uh, I would like to confirm whether uh, I am audible enough uh, and visible enough. Uh, may I know uh, from Komal Madam? Am I am I audible and uh, visible clearly? There is no technical error. If anyone can answer, it is fine. Uh, if anyone can answer, it is fine from my side. So if okay, okay, so. We'll go ahead with uh, transform domain uh, video watermarking. So basically, transform domain transform domain is uh, uh, transform domain is basically C convert modify convert back and C kind of algorithm. You see, in the spatial domain, you convert it into transform domain. You modify the transform domain coefficients. Then uh, you convert it back, uh, the modified version back to the spatial domain because because we cannot see transform domain version of uh, any signal, right? So again, uh, go back to spatial domain and uh, again see the uh, resultant image or video, right? So this is what we would require to do in the transform domain uh, uh, modification, uh, forward transform modification in the image followed by the reverse. Uh, transform right followed by the reverse transform so uh, there are many transforms we can start with discrete cosine transform these are the expression we can we can uh, uh, we can move ahead with the expression but but f uh, this is small f of x comma y uh, basically it is a spatial domain image and this capital f of u comma v so far as the, this expression is concerned uh, this is a discrete uh, frequency uh, cosine transform of, uh, of of this particular partial domain image so uh, so far as the result is concerned this is this is uh, the original image on the left uh, b uh, suggest bcd of the image uh, when you when you consider entire image as a as a single block and when you divide this image into blocks and apply dct to a particular blocks you would find this uh, uh, answer of DCT to be here. So you see the difference between these two, B and C. Both are both are discrete cosine transformed version of uh, image uh, original image A. 
right discrete cosine transform the version of both these things. but you see over here when you divide your image into blocks and apply dct to individual blocks then your result is good as compared to the giving the uh, taking the uh, dct of the entire image right okay so block based approach is good as compared to the single block approach so when you divide into block and when you apply discrete cosine transform to a particular block of an image i have given one example of 8 cross 8 uh, you uh, you will find your frequencies means what does dct do dct convert the spatial domain image into frequency domain version what is frequency domain version it 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 it, it gives you the idea of frequencies present within the image signal because it is a signal means it is having the frequency that frequency can be divided into three parts let in in, in general as a whole that frequency can be can be divided into into three parts part number 1 is low frequency part part number 2 is medium frequency and part number 3 is high frequency when you apply discrete cosine transform uh, but to a block of the image suppose this is 8 cross 8 then the frequency of the transformed image uh, increases in a zigzag manner from the left most corner to right bottom corner the top left co corner to the right bottom right corner right in zigzag manner its frequency increases so clearly it is having the idea that in the middle part you would find the middle frequency so low frequency uh so far as one concept is concerned uh, i should uh, quote here the concept the most info important information in any signal resides within the low frequency part of that particular uh, signal so whenever you want to put some messages behind your uh, uh, video don't use the low frequency component for putting your message why because if your low frequency components are disturbed your entire image gets disturbed right because it is having the maximum information carried in it in uh, high frequency uh, signals are also not uh, recommended for uh, putting your message in why because whenever any compression kind of attack uh, is applied on uh, the on, on on the video or frame of the video then the first component to uh, to be deleted is high frequency component so it is good to choose uh, medium frequency component or mid frequency components for putting your message behind the watermark right so uh, this is the uh, on the left hand side i have placed jpeg quantization table so we use this two values 22 you uh, will use in bold uh, it, it is presented fifth row and second column and fourth row and third column both are equal so we use both of this so as to embed our watermark and the the process is like this so what we do is when in in my image uh, we would be increasing the distance between these two values when your watermark message is uh, uh, when when the difference between these two values is less than k k means again again factor right else will be reducing the difference between these two so increasing the table when the message uh, when, when the difference is less than k and reducing the difference between the messages is then uh, greater than k right k is the gain factor so again uh, with 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 the same gain factor 100 if i if i take put the result you see it is it is far more better than what we uh, what we had in uh, a correlation based approach uh, visually also and uh, qualitatively quantitatively also right so if in the extraction process simple algorithm that if if, if uh, the pixel presented uh, fifth row and second column uh, value is more than fourth row and third column value message is equal to one because we have increased the, when message was one we have increased the difference uh, and when message was zero we have reduced the difference right so when uh, this difference is more message is equal to 1 and when uh, otherwise the message is 0 right so you see the recovered uh, message over here with the help of the dct technology with the same gain factor is like this right it is it, it is not good as compared to correlation but 
it is visible so trade off again again uh, trade off is uh, here you see the quality of the watermark uh, trail is very high as compared to the correlation based method right so uh, this is the various uh, factor of alpha again uh, the same concept when alpha increases quality decreases but at the same time but at the same time since gain is applied to the watermark at the same time it is increased but you see uh, there, there is significant there, there is no significant change from uh, uh, of the recovered correlation value here you find 0.87 when alpha is equal to 10 when alpha is equal to 90 you find 0.89 what does it mean your value of alpha does not have more effect on 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 uh, on, on the recovered message so far as the city is concerned but yes your value of alpha is more concerned from 46 db to 35 db psnr value is more concerned on the on on what we can say on the perceptibility aspect right so this is the tabular column column again we have seen the same kind of uh, thing but over here observation is you you take the frames looks visibly good again at the 28 db and 0.5 db right but uh, the observation is very uh, much better than a correlation technique it is not robust again filtering attack and rotation attack similar to what we observed in uh, correlation uh, correlation technique they are partially robust against most of the uh, again, uh, other uh, filtering compression and all the noises right it was not observed in that particular correlation based method but very good very much robust against color reduction similar to correlation uh, as well as uh, cropping similar to correlation but it is fully robust against histogram equalization linear motion of the camera as well as the high pass filtering attack, attack right so it is better than uh, it, it is uh, proven to be better than correlation based method the second method is discrete wavelet transform as we all know wavelet transform is basically decomposition of uh, the signal into its low frequency components and high frequency component whenever we apply uh, wavelet transform uh, to uh, 2d images initially it, initially rows of that particular 2d image uh, is applied low pass and high pass filter and low pass filtered part is again given to low pass and high pass and you get two uh, components and similarly high pass component also pass through low pass and high pass component for the column purpose uh, you get also two components so uh, uh, overall above what we are getting is uh, whenever you apply discrete wavelet transform to uh, a image you will get four parts uh, low uh, ll hl lh and hh approximation component which is having maximum information hl component lh component and hs component subsequently the information decreases the amount of the information decreases ll that is approximation component is having the most prominent uh, information uh, in the in the image right so again that uh, ll part can again be applied to second level of decomposition and can can find ll2 hl2 lh2 and HS2. So depending on your requirement, you can increase the number of levels and you can uh, use this discrete wavelet transform. So these are the results of uh, one level and uh, two level discrete uh, wavelet transform. You can see that basically it looks like we are working in spatial domain. But no, you, we are not working in spatial domain. But yes, it looks like spatial domain. So it, it becomes easy uh, for us to modify. Right, it, it becomes easy for us to modify the uh, things. Right, so here in this great wavelet transform, if you put uh, put to want to uh, place the embedding algorithm, uh, again we use the uh, two sequences, pseudo random sequences, one for uh, message zero and another for message one. But here uh, the algorithm is if the message bit is zero, your watermark block is filled with zero and uh, otherwise means, means uh, if the message bit is one it is filled with uh, a detail sequence one right original horizontal detail component is added with the weighted watermark block wherein the weight is called again factors are similar 
the weight is uh, gain factor and again the same kind of weight will be observing so here you see the algorithm is very straight forward when your message bit is zero your watermark block is filled with uh, your sequence zero otherwise it is with sequence one so here um, uh, you can easily predict that at the receiver end we will be finding the correlation of each block with either pn sequence zero or pn sequence one and uh, whomsoever correlation is higher uh, we can predict uh, whether the message was one or zero right so with the same gain factor we observed various values and you can find that the results are intermediate between dct and uh, correlation uh, it is better than correlation but it is uh, less than uh, dct so let us see what are the advantage at the uh, extraction process similarly whenever you find correlation uh, more in pn sequence zero then message bit is assigned zero otherwise message bit is one right so you see the result uh, recovered messages so uh, again comparing correlation dct and dwt you find that dwt message is somehow degraded as compared to dct but it is better than uh, uh, it is better than correlation method right and you see um, um, uh, it is basically the uh, amalgamation between uh, good quality of the image and good recovery at more values of the alpha yes it is not um, the recovery is not good uh, as uh, uh, not good as dct but it is better than uh, correlation so it is in between that two right and these are the results which represents various values so we found that dwt is is placed in between these two so far as results uh, visual results on the transmitter and receiver side is concerned but what about attacks right what about attacks so you can see that now it is fully robust against uh, histogram equalization linear motion of camera and dropping attacks right and it is partially uh, robust against all the uh, noise as well as uh, gaussian low pass filtering and uh, compression right and it is not robust against average filtering medium filtering and high pass filtering attacks so again it is in between uh, these two dct and the uh, correlation fine so now one more parameter was uh, constituted that is singular value decomposition that singular value decomposition is the concept of uh, a linear algebra uh, which is applied to uh, which is applied in the general mathematical uh, applications and it is found to be very much important so far as these application of video watermarking is concerned let us see what what it has so singular value decomposition is the numerical technique based on the linear algebra what does it uh, do it diagonalizes the matrices in the numerical analysis means whenever you apply svd singular value decomposition to a frame of size m cross n it gives the mat three matrices it gives three matrices one is u one is v and another one is s wherein you can see that u and v are unitary matrices u matrix both are unitary matrices both are square matrices u represents uh, m cross m that means row cross row and v will be having the size of m cross m both will be square matrices while important to us is s which is diagonal matrix uh, which is of the same size as your uh, image or frame is columns of u and v are left and right singular values but diagonal elements of s are called singular values and they are arranged most important for us is they are arranged in decreasing order decreasing diagonal order right means highest point at zero frequency we have highest value and then the value decreases according to the uh, according to our quality of the image so what is said the singular value of any image this is this that is why the svd is most famous Uh, in the case of image or video watermarking why because of this single statement the singular value of image have very good stability that is when a small perturbation is added okay like uh, that means that means when we add something or when we subtract something where we when when we degrade something uh, into the image its svs means singular values do, do not change significantly 
so there is no significant change found even if you you change a a a higher value in the image so hence it is most important for the robustness and truly so most important advantage over all previous methods why because of these statement only the singular values are very much stable even if you apply major change in the image the singular values does not change significantly and hence it is proven to be advantageous over the whole previous methods of uh, spatial and uh, transform domain and again over and above that until this point we were discussing about only binary messages the message is in the form of either 0 or 1 and based on whether the message bit is 0 we are doing something uh, if the message bit is 1 we do the some other operation at the receiver end we do the inverse operation but we cannot put a grayscale message uh, inside uh, these uh, inside our uh, video or frame of the video in those three cases but in this case uh, uh, the grayscale message can also be embedded right so what is embedding process do so here the idea is you you change s values why you change s values because we have seen that even if we change s values in a higher proportion the degradation will be in the lower proportion right so you apply svd to svd to the y matrix y matrix means uh, luminance component to the frame and uh, uh, like this so the modified singular component as per this expression you can see that it is original plus k k means the gain factor plus sw what is sw basically it is at, uh, svd of the matrix you apply svd to uh, image you apply svd to the message also uh, and you modify the images svd's s value with the help of the watermarks s value s value means singular value right and you modify like this so you have that and you see the best results came uh, for the binary as well as grayscale messages right compared to all this why because their singular value do not change significantly even after we change it uh, so heavily right so for the first time we observed that we can embed binary as well as grayscale messages in way and, and we can find almost the same uh, uh, results in both the case better than what we have discussed in the previous uh, methods right and uh, so far as extraction process is concerned it is exactly reverse to what we have done your message is uh, your uh, uh, watermarks to s value uh, sorry your uh, image minus your s value of the watermark divided by your gain factor because you know your gain factor so when you know your gain factor you divide it uh, you will find the message and you will be surprised to know that message is exactly equal to what we have given you see the grayscale message and you see the quality of the grayscale message and binary message uh, even even uh, with 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 this much of uh, a gain factor even this much of degradation we have this right so very good results can be achieved using singular value decomposition it is the best so far as uh, this application is concerned even in the even even in the application of uh, compression also it is uh, singular value decomposition is proven to be fine uh, in all cases right so you see Uh, we are getting good results uh, when the values of alpha is uh, 10 or uh, 10 or you you see the result alpha 10 your value is 44 psnr value is 44 so it's absolutely visible and uh, your message is almost similar to what we have given 99 percentage of the similarity is that you and um, uh, up to 98 so even the value of alpha goes to even uh, value of alpha goes to 100 um your significant uh, your result at the receiver end is very good right having the correlation factor or in and around or more than 95 right and uh, similar is the case for the grayscale in, in 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 case of the grayscale you you see almost 99 percentage of the accuracy with uh, all values of the alpha so it is good that we can use grayscale messages right and binary messages you see uh, it is best so far as this but again we can uh, grayscale message right with the grayscale message this are the you see 
uh, for the alpha value of 1, almost MSC is 0 and you find PSNR highest value, right? Almost equal. You, and, and recovery is also very good. Fine. So, grayscale message, observation same, perceptibility decreases with the increase in the gain factor and robustness decreases. Observation is, you see, it is fully robust against old kind of attacks. This is the best advantage of the SVD. It is fully robust against all kind of attacks measured in case of again both uh, binary as well as grayscale method. So this this particular algorithm that is linear algebra is proven to be best in case of the video order marking and it produces the PSNR at correlation value with the binary message as compared to that in the grayscale uh, messages. So good, but again. The security, so far as the security is concerned, uh, we have thought of an idea of hybrid video watermarking. Hybrid video watermarking is uh, means we will be using all this algorithm, all this concept, uh, make it hybridized so that so that uh, it becomes more powerful and uh, more secure uh, uh, so far as the watermarking is concerned. So simply combining the advantages of all three in the hybrid video watermarking algorithm, DCT, DWT and SVD, so as to get the highest robustness as well as you get the more moderate perceptibility. So first you apply DWT followed by DCT. To the DCT matrix you apply SVD. You modify the uh, singular uh, value, singular component uh, of the SVD. Uh, do the reverse process and find the result. So again this is best result that we uh, get extraction process is exactly uh, reverse to that of what we embedded but we found a good result uh, as compared to all three but more secure so uh, we we penetrated to the three level of dwt followed by dct followed by svd so the security features that is added inside your video is also good so anyone easily cannot be able to identify that that uh, um, there are messages embedded inside this particular video and uh, you see result are very good uh, not degraded so much as compared to what SVD got but yes security features added were very much high similar is the case for the grayscale value so uh, yeah so we can get get the good results as in, in this hybrid video watermarking algorithm in both binary as well as grayscale uh, messages uh, these are the observations that again fully robust why because we are ultimately at the last part we are applying uh, before before embedding we are applying svd so similar observations to svd uh, if we if we i i place some comparative comparative analysis over here so so that you can be able to understand that why it is good to use hybrid algorithm as compared to the other, right? So PSNR values, if you see, uh, on, on on different colors represents various uh, methods. As you can see, correlation, DCT, DWT, SVD, only and hybridization of all these three without uh, with uh, binary message and with grayscale message. So you see, almost uh, uh, in all case, you find this to be highest side. Uh, DWT, DCT and SVD to be at the highest side so far as PSNR value is concerned uh, and uh, MSC also, MSC is reduced uh, or minimum most probably zero uh, and correlation value at the receiver end uh, it is almost uh, equal to one for uh, um, DWT, DCT, SVD with, uh, 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 with black and white watermark as well as grayscale watermark these are the attacks. You see average filtering attack. Uh, almost all attacks you see uh, the combination is better, SVD is better and uh, grayscale value is also better. Otherwise, there are you can find fluctuations in the other individual methods, right? Uh, similarly for Gaussian uh, low pass filtering, median filtering, compression when you compress the uh, in between reduce the amount of the color, uh, you equalize the histogram, linear motion of the camera. You see, uh, for DCT, you find very bad results so far as this concept is concerned. Uh, 
रोटेशन गोशियन नॉइज अदर नॉइज स्पीकल नॉइज ड्रॉपिंग अटेक एंड द टाइम दिस इज दिस इज वन ऑफ द गुड आस्पेक्ट आई मस्ट स्पेसिफाई हियर दैट दैट दिस इज फाइन दैट दिस आर द एल्गोरिदम दे आर दे आर गुड इन robustness they are good in perceptibility but this is again a most important part to be considered when whenever you hybridize the algorithm the time required by the by your system to embed the or complete the entire system, complete the entire process you need to see you see correlation correlation gives uh, less time and then after the com- combination gives the less time so when you combine these three the uh, the what we the process is more much faster than the other one that means that whenever we hybridize the algorithm hybridize the algorithm as compared to individual we can make use of this algorithm in a real time uh, basis as compared to those two right those all right so hence hybridization one of the most important uh, advantage of hybridization is the reduced amount of the time that is required to complete the entire process over and above the value of psn or value of msc and value of correlation elapsed time gives the good results right so hence uh, uh, this is this is what is uh, what is the conclusion of uh, entire thing that uh, hybridization method is they are fully uh, robust as well as uh, it takes the smallest amount of time uh, that is taken uh, by uh, the system so this is what i uh, wanted to share it with you i thank you for uh, patience listening uh, all i hope uh, i have been given uh, the enough time and uh, um, uh, sorry if i have uh, went I, i i i took more time so uh, thank you all I, i i am happy to answer any of the questions uh, from uh, your side Uh, yes, ma'am. Right. One might have to find also to ask that uh, how can we select transform uh, as per the image. So, what are the criteria for selecting the transform? Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, basically, transform is to be selected based on the type by based on the quality of the image. For example, transform. What does transform do? It converts the spatial domain image into frequency domain image. now frequency of the image needs to be considered or need to be known what is frequency of the image so frequency of, of the image represents to the value of the background the value of the uh, features of the image if you find the uh, image more background in the image your uh, frequency is low you find more edges more lines more points more dots then you find more high frequency components inside the image then then whenever you find more high frequency components you go to dct uh, compared to dwt and when you find more background you go to dwt otherwise both are same but this is this this can be one aspect of of choosing the transform right depending on the frequency of the image the quality of the image the frequency components within the image we cannot directly predict the frequency of the image by just looking into it but if your image is having more number of edges more number of points more number of lines uh, they are having the high frequency components and dct is better than dwt in those otherwise if uh, background is more if the single color is more uh, less number of lines less number of edges you can go for dwt right but this is for single image but if you go for video it would be mixed so again it is a trade off that you can go for one or uh, again combination can be done for the video cases uh, sir, yes the question is that uh, behind image can we hide uh, any other uh, format files that is second question behind uh, be, uh, i would not be able to uh, behind Is it possible to hide any other yes. format file? Yes, yes. Uh, basically, uh, as uh, in the first or second or third slide, as I mentioned, 
uh, your voter mark message can be uh, image we discussed the image uh, throughout uh, our presentation uh, as a voter mark file but your voter mark file can also be text it can also be audio it can also be in another video right so depending on your requirement depending on your message you can choose any one of them right so uh, it can be allowed any anything is allowed you can put message you can you can put image you can put video you can put audio or uh, even you can put uh, text behind uh, behind this frame of the video why because as a sing as a simple answer to this uh, 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 we can say that uh, uh, basically everything is signal everything is signal you you say text audio video image everything is signal and signal behind signal is always possible because it is number behind number it, it is modification of number itself what we have done throughout this uh, discussion we have modified numbers also uh, only sorry we have modified numbers only we we have not uh, we can say here that uh, we have not uh, uh, processed the image we have just applied mathematical algorithm to uh, to a matrix which looks like image which looks like video so this is what we have done as simple as that okay sir another question is that uh, is there any specific procedure for implementing this hybrid approach a uh, specific procedure that means uh, we need to uh, uh, we 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 need to join the the breaks what does it mean it means that uh, suppose in uh, in case of uh, in, in in case of a car building or any any machine building we would appropriately choose the bearings as well as other components of the system so similarly over here Uh, uh, uh we we should choose the appropriateness of the system for example what we have done is we applied a dwt first then dct then svd uh, maybe this question is related to that uh, whether svd can be first dct can be first dwt can be second third anything else so the specific procedure is we need to understand the concept of uh, dwt dct and uh, svd and from that we can be able to know that dwt is basically looks like image itself so when you apply dwt first it gives image out of image approximately then on that you apply dct why why you are applying secondly dct not svd because we have understood that svd is a singular components are those components which even after the strong degradation they are if they represent only a small degradation as compared to dct so what we do is we apply we we apply uh, water marking to uh, svd uh, svd is singular uh, values only and hence we are using this sequence dwt followed by dct followed by svd so the specific procedure means specific procedure for implementation is means understanding the concept and uh, uh understanding how best advantage we can take of all these three so as so as to hybridize right so hybridization of the petrol diesel with cng seems good hybridization of petrol diesel and solar does not seem good or solar petrol and diesel does not seem good so so basically it is the combination of uh, uh, of all with which go uh, with which we go based on the concept that we have learned so this is what is the uh, what what can be my answer to uh, this question i uh, i hope it is clear yes sir yes sir you have uh, given very satisfactory answer uh, sir so uh, on behalf of gtu uh, i thank you uh, for this interesting and interact interacting session on the image water marking and really it is very informative all the participants are able to get a sufficient knowledge and they are now ignited to do research in this domain and nowadays as far as security and information hiddenness is concerned uh, water marking is a very huge domain for the research yeah. and you can do uh, many task many hybrid algorithm using that uh, direction so sir you have ignited our participants and you have given very good direction 
so in many aspects we can use that module uh, to Absolutely. make our system more robust and more uh, uh, more sensible rather than we can say that so Absolutely. thank you very much sir on uh, here uh, here here i would like to add only a single point that uh, if uh, people are from uh, pg sites and they want to uh, go for their dissertation in the water marking side there are still uh, you can go for medical uh, image and video water marking as well as new domain theme uh, of uh, satellite uh, image water marking because nowadays uh, finding the satellite images is uh, easy as compared to previous days and hence uh, um, uh, Uh, putting the watermark behind the satellite images or using the satellite images as a watermark is good uh, so far as uh, 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 this era of uh, google map and all is concerned so you can go with that also yes sir fine so uh, thank you thank you very much sir uh, thank for you, receiving our invitation and thank you valuable time to the participants so uh, we are we are going to conclude our session okay? and uh, we are continuing our series so we will meet with all the participants on the saturday so thank you all thank you very much participants thank you very much and uh, thank, thank you, you very much to our honorable director sir for providing the opportunity to organize such type of uh, webinar series uh, on every saturday thank you thank you to all